Let's look at the rational approach to organizational ethics. This is based on Kohlberg's moral development theory. So what is the main idea of this rational approach, this moral development approach to ethics? Well, it comes from Kohlberg's Stages of Moral Development, which was a popular theory in the 50s, 60s, and 70s when uh, scientific uh, psychology was just starting out. And it traced the, the thought of children as they developed and got older. And that's why it's called moral development, the idea that people's uh, moral choices and ways of making moral decisions change as they get older. But the basic assumption, and the key thing that we want to focus on, is this idea that rational thought influences our moral decisions. Now we're going to see that there's lots of other theories about what influences our moral decisions, but we're going to focus on this idea that we do have rational thought, and that can influence the way that we think. And so this was originally designed as a developmental theory so that children and adults progress through stages in their moral reasoning. They start off here, and they go to here, and then to here, to here, here, and here, that there are six stages. And now stage theories were really popular in the 50s and 60s and 70s. They are far less popular uh, today, and we'll talk about that. Uh, later in when we evaluate uh, uh, the value of this theory. Now, according to Kohlberg, most people stop in the middle stages. They're not like little children, but they're not like the most fully developed humans either. They're somewhere in the middle. And the other assumption is, is that superior decisions are made by using the more advanced moral reasoning that most people don't use. Now, to understand what these different stages are, there's, uh, for, for decades, there's been a story that's been used uh, with uh, uh, Kohlberg's theory, and it's called the Heinz scenario. And so let me, let me read it to you. In Europe, a woman was near death from cancer. One drug might save her, a form of radium that a druggist in the same town had recently discovered. The druggist was charging $2,000, ten times what the drug cost him to make. The sick woman's husband, Hines, went to everyone he knew to borrow the money, but he could only get together about half of what it cost. He told the druggist that his wife was dying and asked him to sell it cheaper or let him pay later, but the druggist said, no. The husband got desperate and broke into the man's store to steal the drug for his wife. And then the ethical question is, should the husband have done that, and why? So we have the scenario of a sick wife, and Heinz uh, uh, breaks into a, a, a drug store to steal a drug that he didn't have the money to, uh, to get. Now, the question is, is this ethical? Now, according, according to Kohlberg, there's different stages, and we start off with the first two, which are called the pre-conventional stages of moral development. These are the ones that little kids use. And in stage one, kids are just concerned about the personal costs, the punishments. And now the way that this is set up is that you could decide either way whether this is ethical or not ethical if you just consider the, the punishment. So the reasons for, the pro reasons for uh, uh, stealing the drug is if you let your wife die, you will get in trouble. You'll be blamed for not spending the money to save her, and there'll be an investigation of you and the druggist for your wife's death. So the stage one is you'll, you'll do it because you don't want to be punished because your wife died. Or you could say you shouldn't steal the drug because you'll be caught and sent to jail if you do. If you do get away, your conscience would bother you thinking how the police would catch up with you at any minute. So the fear of punishment could keep you from stealing the drug, and you would always have to live with that fear even if they didn't catch you. Now stage two is uh, where you consider the, the personal costs and benefits, the rewards and benefits. So uh, reason for stealing the drug would be 
If you do happen to get caught, you could give the drug back and you wouldn't get much of a sentence. It wouldn't bother you much to serve a little jail term if you have your wife when you get out. So you get your wife and jail, so it's worth it. Or you could read Reason. He might not get much of a jail term if he steals the drug, but his wife will probably die before he gets out, so it won't do him much good. If his wife dies, he shouldn't blame himself. It wasn't his fault she has cancer. So oh, don't do it because you'll never get to see your wife once you, you're in, in jail. So that's an example of stage two reasoning. Now, stage three and four are a little bit more advanced and a little bit more sophisticated, and they're where most uh, adults stop. So stage three is you consider the relational costs of the decision. So an argument that could lead to uh, stealing the drug would be, no one will think you're bad if you steal the drug, but your family will, but your family will think you're an inhuman husband if you don't. If you let your wife die, you'll never be able to look at anybody in the face again. So, you'll lose all your relationships and your family if you let your wife die. But you could also think, oh, it isn't just the druggist who will think you're a criminal, everyone else will too. After you steal it, you'll feel bad thinking how you've brought dishonor on your family and yourself. You won't be able to face anyone again. Also, you might not steal it because you're afraid of everyone rejecting you. Stage four is you consider the costs associated from guilt and shame from not doing one's duty. So stage three was about relationships. Stage four is about one's duty. So reasoning that could lead to stealing the drug would be, if you have any sense of honor, you won't let your wife die because you're afraid to do the only thing that will save her. You'll always feel guilty that, uh, that you caused her death if you don't do your duty to her. So you better do it or you're going to feel guilty for not doing your duty. But you could also reason you're desperate and you may not know uh, you're doing wrong when you steal the, the drug. But you'll know you did wrong after you're punished and sent to jail. You'll always feel guilty for your dishonesty and law breaking. So you might not know the right thing to do now, but if you get put in jail, you'll always be sorry for having broken the law. So those are the conventional stages of moral development. And then what Kohlberg considered to be the superior levels are the post-conventional stages of moral development. Stage five is concern about the loss of respect due to being irrational. So there's a big emphasis put on being rational here. And if you're, you're seen as being irrational, you'll lose respect. So the reason for stealing the drug using this type of reasoning would be you'd lose other people's respect, not gain it, if you don't steal. If you let your wife die, it would be out of fear, not of reasoning it out. So you'd just lose self-respect and probably the respect of others, too. Or reasoning about uh, uh, respect for being rational could lead you to not steal the drug. You would lose your standing and respect in the community and violate the law. You'd lose respect for yourself if you're carried away by emotion and forget the long-range point of view. That's stage five. And then stage six, the ultimate level that uh, Kohlberg thought that, that uh, uh, all people or, or should, should aspire to, is concerned about self-condemnation not living up to your principles, so not living up to your own values. So reasoning that could lead to studying the st stealing the drug would be, if you don't steal the drug and let your wife die, you'd always condemn yourself for it afterward. You wouldn't be blamed and you would have, uh, and you would have lived up to the outside rule of law, but you wouldn't have lived up to your own standards of conscience. So you'd always have to live with yourself realizing that you didn't obey your conscience if you don't steal it. Reasoning that could lead to stealing against stealing it would be, if you stole the drug, you wouldn't be blamed by other people, but you'd condemn yourself because you wouldn't have lived up to your own conscience and standards of honesty. So you would always feel dishonest because you stole the, the drug. So those are the six levels of um, moral development that Kohlberg uh, proposed and measured in different people. Um, 
but let's look at some of the, the critiques of this uh, approach to ethics. Now, there's a couple classic critiques that we'll see all over the place when you look at Kohlberg. One is that it's biased against women. When you measure people's um, uh, moral reasons for doing things, when you interview people about why they do it, it turns out that stage three is the most common for women. They're concerned about the relational implications of what happens. Whereas stage four, concern for duty, is most common for men. So in Kohlberg's model there, men come out as more sophisticated. But if you think about it, why is concern for duty higher than concern for relationships? Why is there, why is level four higher than level three? Why isn't concern for relationships level three? Or maybe it should be level six. Um, the, the justification for these different levels isn't really clear, so which results in a, a bias against the, the moral reasoning of uh, uh, women. Now, another classic uh, uh, critique of this is that it's culturally biased. It's the, the highest level, the level six, is typical of the thinking of male college professors in the 1960s and 70s when this theory was really popular. So if, and that's how a lot of stage theories are. The highest stage kind of describes these uh, male college professors of the 60s and 70s. Um, and there's probably a little, uh, little bias uh, going on uh, there. And that's one of the reasons that stage theories are no longer uh, um, uh, uh, in style because the top, the top stage tends to always be defined by the, the culture of the person that's developing the stage theory. Now, there's other critiques of Kohlberg's theory that are relevant for ethics and for organizational ethics and for this uh, course. Um, one is Kohlberg's theory explicitly doesn't tell you what the right thing to do is. Um, it just uh, um, says, well, these are different people making it in different ways. And in some ways, it encourages the belief that nothing is truly right or wrong. Um, it's just morally, everything's morally relative based on your own uh, uh, rationality. Secondly, it assumes that the process by which one arrives at a decision is more important than the decision. The, the process of stages five and six are more are superior to the lower stages there. And then a third critique is that it assumes that moral truth is discerned purely rationally from within oneself. So there's two assumptions there. One is that moral decisions are purely rational, and secondly, that it comes only from within oneself. And maybe moral standards aren't completely determined by us. Maybe there are some absolute standards there. And secondly, maybe we're not very rational. And uh, a number of other theories uh, uh, address that question of how quite often we are not rational. But there are some strengths to this theory. And the principal strength of this approach is that we when we are rational and we weigh the costs and benefits of any decision, there are many factors that we take into uh, moral decisions. So Kohlberg, he listed six, rewards, punishments, relationships, duties, status and honor, values. And rather than going through stages where we uh, consider uh, uh, only one of these, we know now when, now that we collect a lot more data and have done a lot more study in uh, the study of people's behaviors, all of these factors come into play and influence our moral decisions. So in any uh, moral decision that we uh, 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 think about doing, we're going to consider these six elements. We'll probably consider more things too, but the rewards, the punishments, the relationships, the duties, the status honor, our values, all of our rational thoughts about these things influence how we do these things. So this is a, a useful tool for understanding the, the multiple motives, the multiple concerns that we have when we uh, think about whether a decision is ethical or not in an organization.